Hello friends, welcome to this video number 7 in the series of videos on financial modeling for the startup businesses. It is a good idea that you watch the previous, previous videos on my channel but it's not a precondition so far as this video is concerned because this video deals with a different topic. It will be I would suggest that you uh, register on reddit.com and open the subreddit startup philosophy and you will find the same video there. We can do a very meaningful discussion with a lot other uh, wide audience of reddit community there. You can watch the other YouTube channels other videos on my YouTube channel to get a hang of the background. Uh, please open the Excel file either linked in this video itself or provided in the information section of the video below it. Please provide me feedback on the quality and presentation of this video. Uh, then I would encourage that you please reproduce this video and redistribute it to the fora where it is more useful when where people cannot grasp my accent or they find some other kind of difficulty in interpretation of the con contents of this video. Okay, the next, next aspect. From whose perspective this video is being made? It is being made basically from the perspective of the promoters, that is the people who are going to take this startup adventure. However, there are many other stakeholders to a startup business, such as the invest investors, the financiers, the customers and uh, the suppliers and this video is beneficial for them as well but the main two beneficiaries of these videos are the promoters of the business and the investors of the business. Let me summarize what all is there in this video. First I am going to tell you about who is the audience of this video, then how we derive, how we come at the time when we start thinking about preparation of a financial model, what all things need to go before preparation of a financial model. So I am going to tell you something about conception of an business idea, feasibility check of an idea, requirement of a little bit of primary research, preparation of a concept note or a pre-preliminary business plan or draft business plan and a way forward a kind of action plan note with you. So those would be the things that you would do at the conception stage. Then when you have idea of an business then you prepare a business model. A business the same services can be delivered to the same customers but the arrangement between all the stakeholders could be very different in all terms, in contractual terms, in risk terms, in pricing terms. So who takes what risk, who does what part of job, etc. is decided in devising the business model for the startup business. That will be the next part. Then we are going to dis discuss about the risk assessment. Then we are to discuss about when we are supposed to prepare a financial model. What is the right time when we conclude that at this point of time I am supposed to prepare the financial model. Then why one should prepare the financial model. Then we are going to see the whether the idea of business requires financial model 
or we can do without it because certain circum business circumstances do not require any financial model then how the loss of objecti objectivity happens when we start developing a business concept and how to overcome it and where the financial model plays a role there then i am going to talk about software for model then i am going to talk about types of model then i am going to talk about the confidentiality and sharing of the financial model then i will tell a little bit about the difference between a financial model and financial statements and then finally i will tell you what all is the use of financial model once what all are the uses of the financial model and once you listen what all are the uses of financial model you might be convinced that i may need to prepare a financial model for my kind of business so let i have thus i have summarized the topics that i am going to discuss in this video now let's go to the first topic who is the audience of this video the promoters the collegiate students or the uh, first time job doers or the people who are may be very experienced but who want to quit jobs and do business or those who want to do part time business because they have had sufficient business experience so uh this this video will also be useful to the investor a little bit because they will need to understand how promoter is looking at the business uh promoters generally have one kind of domain knowledge here the word promoters refers to the people who want to start the business who want to do all the initial activities who want to conceive the idea who want to prepare the financial model who want to prepare the business plan who want to then implement it on a micro scale on the ground who uh, want to pursue the investors or invest in in it who want to scale it up and who want to earn more money from it so those people are promoters uh, it's this promoter word is not related to the advertising industry where the promotion of your business in media brings you more customers that's a different term promoters means the people who promote the business from nothing so the promoters are generally aware of one aspect of business they are either very uh, experts in predicting what kind of idea will uh, generate what kind of revenues uh, they might be knowing how to arrange money for certain kind of business or they might be aware how to make alliances join companies together they might be knowing about the prices products their specifications they might be about knowing about only a fraction of aspects that a business requires knowledge of they will not be aware of all the aspects of business so one has to delineate what all aspects are involved in doing in a business and the part knowledge even though it is a very expert knowledge of a promoter in a particular domain it would not be reliable he has to follow a procedure and when he follows that procedure his business will be more successful remember that the word startup sometimes appears to be a disdainful word because it it refers only to the start of something and it is when we couple this understanding with the failure rate of startups it looks even more demeaning that is because the proper procedure for following up a startup 
is not properly undertaken by the promoters. Otherwise, there is no reason why a startup should fail and why the failure rate of startups should be shown so high. So you can uh, you can be reasonably sure that your startup is not a failure by ensuring that you have followed a proper procedural uh, you have followed proper steps in going about your business. So the objective of this video can be summarized in just two titles. One is when to start doing financial modeling and second what is the significance of financial modeling. So now let us come to the first step. The first stage of project development or startup is attitude assessment. Uh, you, you as a person of having expert knowledge or knowledge uh, might not be the right person in concluding whether you are made to do business or not. Because you might be having all the traits of a businessman and yet you might be concluding that oh I am not made for doing business. Uh, so you should neutrally and impartially check by uh, through a professional medium whether you meet certain kind of attitudinal parameters uh, and whether you can do business. That will be a separate video uh, I will uh, uh, upload later. Then one should assess the personal situation. Personal situation is also very important. Unless you assess your personal situation properly, you should not go ahead with a startup. Then you assess the business situation and then you by business situation, I mean situation of the sector, segment and the economy etc. Then one should go ahead with the formation of an idea. These are different topics altogether and they need good elaboration and I will do them, do that in independent videos. Now, once even formation of a business idea that too has a lot of significance. People don't do business because they feel that they don't have business idea. But there is a proper methodology of conceiving business ideas. I will generate a video on that as well. But for this moment, let's assume that we have a business idea and it appears to be reasonable and we are going to check whether this business idea will survive or not. In this analysis, further, now we come to the elaboration stage from the conception stage. Its elaboration stage is a mental work and it's a tough work. The here one has to be specific and one has to stop making all kinds of vague statements. The in this stage one has to identify who will do business, then what business, what will be the products and services, what will be the types of products and services, then in what geography the business will be done. The question is not as simple. It means in what geography the production will happen, in what geography the customers would be residing, in what geography the sourcing of services will be happening or there would be multiple permutations and combinations of these things. So, Next, one has to think about what form of company will be there. That is, whether it will be proprietorship firm, a partnership firm, a limited liability company, a limited liability partnership, or any a trust, 
an NGO or there are many such entity forms that are recognized by government and one has to see when we identify our objective, we identify our limitations and circumstances, we have to see which form of organization suits our purposes best and then we have to form that organization, that company accordingly. And even when we form the company that way, we have to uh, we have to incorporate the relevant clauses in the documentation of the organization formed. Now, many a times in the IT enabled businesses or web based businesses, there is a lot of confusion on who are the customers because the needs of unknown people are met on your website whereas the revenues are generated from some third persons. So the exact identification of customers should happen. Customer is that entity which pays you and the service if you are providing services to someone else they are it is just part of operations now hence the business models that are based on advertising or sale of data would have a different approach towards customer than those businesses where the products or services or works are directly sold to customers now one has to know what type of customers we are returning to are they non visible people like in most ordinary businesses and are they just site visitors like in the advertising model business and here there is one point that when your revenues are indirect then you have to map as in case of advertising what kind of traffic will result in what kind of revenues what quality of traffic what specifications of people coming to your site will result in more number of money so that analysis too has to take place that is called uh, business modeling. Coming to the next point, uh, we have to very clearly specify the write down the whole, whole, the exhaustive and accurate specifications of our products and services. As a promoter, one has to clearly write down the names of all possible services that he is thinking to sell and the all specifications of those services. It is a very good idea to also write down the exclusions and the quality parameters of each of them. Then one has to know what would be the media of business. So, so, this is the initial mental thinking of a business. Now, let us come to the next stage, which is preparation of a basic concept note, in which we capture all these details, we elaborate them and we conclude that, okay, this kind of business is possible, I have these strengths, I don't have these strengths and let me work toward us going forward. Now, one has to do a little bit of feasibility study through some secondary research. When you propose a solution, uh, when you propose to sell certain goods or services to a certain customer at certain prices, that entails a certain setup uh, and you must look whether such kind of service is technically feasible, whether the technology exists now, 
whether it is you have to check its regulatory feasibility certain kind of activities are not permitted in certain countries though apparently you yourself might find no harm in them so you have to check whether all the activities that i am envisaging under my business are permitted in my country or not then you do a little bit of market feasibility in which you have the idea of your product or service and then you move from you start from a large set of people and then you narrow down to um say a small number of people so if if you take in case of our retail financial services business suppose we want to expand out our business to the state of kerala then uh, the state would make a good case because it has good financial income and it has higher per capita income because of remittances etc etc so uh, how many uh, rich families are there what is their general saving what is their um, objective of uh, investment etc we can analyze through secondary resources available <coughs> on uh, the website of finance ministry of government of india the finance department of government of kerala and several agencies that keep accumulating the economic data of states you can make several kind of interpretations from that and that would be called the feasibility of market if and you should be generally very conservative about how much audience you would be able to actually tap because if you find that there are around say 20000 uh, rich families in a city where your retail financial services could be sold then you should not assume that all 100% of them will be your customer you should be very conservative especially when the geography is very wide if the geography is very small then maybe you can do very hard marketing in the small area but for large geographies maybe you can be conservative then you have to make estimations of prices and quantities the prices and quantities also are interlinked then one has to also look at the investment feasibility I mean, whether you yourself will be able to invest whether certain other people will be able to invest whether a bank will give you a loan etc that you have to see the venture capital investment we will look at some other point of time the then you have to look at the manpower feasibility to cater to a certain kind of service we need manpower of a certain degree of education skills experience uh, maturity and whether such kind of manpower is available there whether it is available at given rates whether other inputs of required to generate that service are available locally and um, whether they can be sourced kept in place assembled etc all we have to see then we have to also see are there any kind of sector incentives domain incentives geographic incentives or community intensives incentives from uh, the government or private trusts etc for a certain activity in economy if you are aware of them you should try to go there and seek them now after all you have after you have done all this with respect to your idea of new business you can prepare a way forward the objective of way forward is to understand what to do next and 
first you should write down what is quite easily possible for you what is what appears to be quite difficult for you among so you should make a clear and vivid list of tasks that may go into this uh, this to start a business so you are most likely to discover that you won't be able to do it all alone uh, if you can well and good but if you won't be able to do it alone then it is good that you look identify what are the strengths that you need to join the identification of all the collaborative strengths will come to you if you go through all these videos uh, then once you map the lacking competencies lacking strengths then you try to approach the other persons and make alliances business alliances or mous or business agreements after that you should develop an understanding with the partner on what will be the role of partner so if you are a college student it will be a good idea that you join hand with the person of little different type where the your skills can be complemented by the person of other skills so if if you want to form a large uh, group of persons i would suggest that a person who has very logical analytical rational and crystal clear thinking and very objective attitude should be generally made to lead the idea it doesn't mean that he will take away more money he should be just allowed to do the work now after that you should have as in your gang engineers and preferably those engineers who deal with that kind of business you should have mbas because they have idea of investment financing and marketing we should have commerce people because they have idea of the accounting aspects the general treatment the these people can uh, these people think in in number terms then you should have maybe lawyers because they can think of the risks etc you you could have maybe just one association of a very senior person who has worked in something called uh, uh, in business development work then you should have uh, persons uh, who, who can be associated with you as uh, tax uh, tax people so the, the, the there there is a, a type of synergy in, uh, in all these activities so it doesn't matter but basically you should have the promoter the person the promoter is basically to give the leadership the other person the logical rational thinker he is supposed to drive the project and the other persons are supposed to give inputs to these two people and this is one sample model you can have n number of models with you and a lot of permutations and combinations of them but this is how you should start thinking on it if you want to uh, expand your business rapidly or take it up successfully now after you do all this uh, thinking uh, when you have identified your alliances you have identified their roles it is 
it is very important that uh, the arrangement between all the allied people that is the promoters should be clearly documented in the in terms of who will do what work who will get associated from when who will contribute how much uh, how many rupees uh, and what will be its stake is there a significance other than monetary of a person's activity in the business then one should also incorporate the terms of writing addi buying additional equity in the business the clauses for exit of a particular partner the transfer of one's role to another person and whether there will be for a certain activity of business individual or collective accountability between the promoters so you are supposed to document this uh, actually there there is lot of legal documentation required when you, when uh, you incorporate at the company but that is at a very later stage even in the beginning you are supposed to incorporate the entire understanding suppose you invest certain money and proceed for 6 months and then you are short of money and one of the persons brings in more money so logically that money sh- should be discounted for the premium so this understanding should be there in the uh, in the initial documentation that you have done so i will now here you start to devise the way forward wave if all things are okay till now then we are looking for way forward way for in way forward you decide when to start now how big to start where to start what to start who will do what etc etc so you write down all these questions exhaust exhaustively till certain action is visible you should not do things randomly when you start to start up you there should be an order there should be a critical path there should be a vision where something in the end is desired and is visible so all these actionable items should be written down and they should be further elaborated they should be discussed the work should be divided etc and you can proceed to work on that uh, i i didn't speak of primary research once you do this you can start little bit of primary research primary research is the when you do things outside google or uh, libraries etc when you actually go and look and feel the market uh, maybe you conduct a survey or you maybe you talk to experts maybe you talk to the potential customers that you think maybe you talk to one potential investor that is this is much before but there is no harm in doing that you will get a perspective of how investors think then you you must understand what is critical to my business then you must prepare the separate lists for the monetary item that these items will are, are critical because they are very pricey and there are certain non monetary items that are very critical for the success of business then you should maybe hold meetings attend conferences add go to twitter go to social media and subscribe to those pages add your go to that sector uh, forums add all this knowledge there are lot many online forums available uh, uh, 
uh, Reddit is one of them. Reddit has a huge number of subreddits for very detailed topics and if you search on Reddit for a very intricate kind of information, you, would, you are likely to get it. You can ask questions there and many expert people are there to help you out. Then on Reddit, uh, you can put the same question on many subreddits and then uh, they will, uh, some or other person will help you mostly to your satisfaction. Then there is Quora, then there is CA Club in which the chartered accountants uh, help you in understanding the financial aspects. There is a lawyer club, there is MBA club, there is a ministry. I mean, there are ministries of the, if you are doing an IT based uh, project, then there is a ministry of information technology, then there are several departments. So you have two to three relevant departments, relevant ministries, relevant industry bodies. So you pr prepare a, a favorite folders of two, three types and store all these links in those folder. Now you have also blogs. If, if you uh, search for blogs on a particular topic, you will come to know the blogs. It is possible that some blog people or some entrepreneurs have shared their ditto experience uh, uh, with you. I would stress that you do not spend much time in motivational speeches etc. You spend most of your time in understanding the procedural aspects of business because until you do not have anyone to carry out the procedural parts of the business, it is you who has to carry it out and if you see that you are not able to carry out the those procedures, you, will, you may wrongly conclude that I am not able to carry out the procedure itself. In the beginning, the business is simple, the procedures too are simple, hence you should focus on your uh, procedures of the business, identification of problem, resolution of problem. Your motivation will sap quite later and at that time you may listen to the motivational speakers. Okay, the, uh, now in this part we are going to discuss the business model decision. Even though you have one particular activity and there is a value addition related to that, the exact nature of business, the contractual arrangement, the uh, who does what etc. has lot many configurations possible in business. When you you say you, you are starting a business, then it doesn't mean that you simply start generating those services or products, customers will come to you and you sell them. It's not simple as that. There are several stakeholders and the nature of arrangement with each of stakeholder is each of the stakeholders is very different can be very different and should be very different and you should be able to find out which arrangement is most suitable for you and as for that you should go for that. Your activity remains same, the economic activity remains same, the product services remain same, the value added remains same but the business configuration, the contractual arrangement, the business model is different, di different depending upon how, what is the arrangement, what is the agreement, what is the role, what is your significance in this scheme of things and this is called business modeling. Business modeling is 
very very important part of business uh, startup and please understand that financial modeling and business modeling are two entirely different thing financial modeling helps you in doing business modeling but business modeling precedes financial modeling or maybe they are iterating you may come you, you would come to know as you face it now uh, i will say that uh, the the business model would have different the business model is basic how is a what is the basic parameter based on which we uh, decide what model it is a certain stakeholder in a certain business chain now i am saying business chain not your business associated with a certain stakeholder in a business chain associated with your business has a certain competence and when it comes to your business so far as the activities in your business are concerned which risk is taken by whom decides the business model for example if you 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 know that we spoke spoke of the capital expenses in detail before by incurring capital expenses we bring the business to its finish point then it starts operating but if you think that i want to give all this i just can't predict these capital expenses and if someone is there in the market then i'll go to them or two people and ask them that this is the final specification of what i want please give me this and quote me what it costs so you are not designing you are not doing any architecture you are not uh, doing any procurement you are not doing many of the activities mm-hmm. you are just telling them that i want to run my operations this way and i want an existing setup in terms of our retail financial services business <coughs> we would he will tell that i want a headquarter a control room a call center equipped to handle these many number of customers of these many types to cater to these many services for these many years now please ready make ready this uh, all this setup by this time and tell me how much money i should give to you so this is called okay, i am not taking implementation risk then there is revenue risk it happens that somebody else would do this retail financial services business that is he will be responsible for advertising etc uh, and getting persons you give the financial services to the customers but the profitability of us will be based on your costs i mean there will be one more person closer to the customer than you and all the revenues accrued will be accrued to him you will be just providing services at a fixed cost and certain profit margin so you don't care whether this business will be successful uh, sorry you won't care whether this business is profitable or not for him because you have got a contract in which you will give certain services to certain person person and get a fixed income from that so this is the management of operation risk the original if you look at the retail financial business that i was in such in right in the beginning and if you, you 
look at the thing that I am talking now, you would see that the business is entirely different. Similarly, operations days. Operations days. You are responsible for setting up the business. You are responsible for reaching the customer and getting him to your, the doors. But all the operations are outsourced. You are dictating what would be the specifications of operations. And then you are responsible for the property. You are taking the revenue risk. So, this is, these are the various permutations and combinations of business models. The, as, as per the circumstances, various business models are suitable for various types of businesses. The business models may be impacted by the scalability of the business, whether it is uh, rapidly, whether it can be scaled up in, within the existing uh, setup, whether it can be expanded, whether it can be replicated everywhere, and whether the replicated operations too can be profitable. Then, what is the arrangement between promoters? Yes, if you are one of the promoters, then your arrangement, if it is very different with the other promoters, then it's a different business model and what is the arrangement with the investor the investor might be permanently interested in your business the investor might be existing exiting after a certain time the investor might be wanting an option to exit after a certain time the investor might be wanting to convert his ownership into the loan after a certain type of time he might be wanting active role, he might be wanting control, he might, might be wanting the chair position of the chairman, etc. So that is again a different model, how you are going to deal with the <coughs> investor. How to deal with investor will be a separate video. Uh, now, and for yourself, if there is some idea in your mind that shall I remain in this business or shall I get out and then why and when and etc. Or should, shall other people get out? Shall I lock them? How I shall lock them? And to lock them, what shall I pay to them? So everything comes, every understanding, every restraint, constraint comes at a certain price and you have to be ready to uh, look at that. Now, after that, you have to again, uh, one more task that you have to do is the risk management. You have to check the major risks to your com uh, company. That is, and understand the word risk in business is different than the word risk in uh, normal parlance. The word risk in business doesn't at all mean, mean danger. It doesn't mean danger. So when you next time hear that a certain business is risky, just do not replace this sentence by feeling that the business is dangerous. The business is risky because there are certain, it, it, it literally means there are uncertainties. And in business, the uncertainty doesn't mean uncertainty on negative side alone. It means uncertainty on positive side as well and equal. So whenever you hear the word risk in terms of business any next time, please do not let the word danger prop up in your mind. Secondly, do not mean only the negative side of the business by that. 
then the uh, okay let me come back to what risks I was telling you if you check the business for regulatory risks competition risks litigation risk and force major risk force major risk means the acts of God such as earthquakes etc then we all these risks are there but uh, most of them can be uh, can be insured uh, at times insurance are, insurances are so a particular category of insurance is just not available in the market sometimes it's not even possible to give that kind of insurance sometimes they are not affordable but still the post major risks are there Now you might have seen that all this is not a small mental exercise. But this is not something that you have to do while listening to this video. You can do this, uh, actually I would advise that you do all the business preparation exercise mentally and peacefully. You should do it say within one month. Opportunities come and go. But if you have a, but if you have an intrinsic ability to tap an opportunity, then the flow of opportunity is not going to cease and you can tap any one of them. So peacefully learn the skill of, uh, of, of doing the business related mental exercise and do it slowly. If you do it slowly, you will cover more aspects. Write those down. It is lot of work. It takes lot of time and if you are doing a lot of work and you are giving a lot of time, don't say that I have to give, I am having to give a lot of uh, time, etc. The things are really very complicated and you are giving a reasonable time. Uh, so there is a lot of expenditure as well. You have to do a lot of groundwork after some time. You have to go visit people, ensure certain things. You have to do a lot of reading. And uh, when you do all these things in collaboration, one person should focus on collecting answer of a particular question. And the other persons, everybody in the team should read it, understand it and ask the basic question. It should be refined together. Not, not all the person should start working on the same problem. That is loss of efficiencies. So, what happens if you start thinking on a business in this particular fashion that I told you? The more the parameters, the more the confusions. The more the analysis, the more the confusions. The more you explore, more aspects come out. The more the innovative part in the business, the lesser the visibility. The faster the expansion required, the lesser the uncertainty. The faster the expansion required, the lesser the certainty. The more complex of, the more the complexity of work, the more the costs. It, it just becomes more and more messy. Rather you feel that the existing job offer you, you have or something very easy that you can do um, looks relatively better because it's, nothing is visible, nothing is uh, certain and um, I just don't know how much money I may sink in this if I proceed ahead. So, there is a lot of pandemonium and is there any way out? Yes, there is a way out and it is the preparation of a financial model. There are certain ground realities that a model cannot handle. But the financial model takes care of 
everything that you can foresee and in integrity with all the other aspects so it's an integral understanding of business over its life cycle and right from before birth of the business so <coughs> first so first you please see whether what business you are going to do is standard common or not or it is little bit different if it is a very standard business then the standard businesses are done the standard ways and you needn't do a financial model there all the standard business information you can acquire by interaction or little bit by trial and error the if generally they are cost plus models you buy goods first time you might be might not be able to set the correct margins but next time you will and then you will understand just after some time that how i can make my business profitable so you don't need to prepare a financial model if your business is ordinarily done by a lot of people this then the next question is do even if the business is not standard do do you want it at a very smaller case what is the expansion of business you expect if you feel that the overall top line will be very less say something like 10 crore rupees then again you don't need to prepare a financial model because 10 crore rupees is a hardly it's lesser than 2 million dollars so sorry a little bit yes little than 2 million dollars and you do not need to waste energy in preparation of a financial model uh, then um, is the business innovative and uh, is there a lot of risk to your career and savings so if the business is pretty innovative it's something entirely new thing in the market it's you plan to expand it scale it up very fast and the risks to your savings are very high if the business doesn't run in that case you should prepare a financial model before that we have seen before all this we have seen that we do not get any visibility any certainty any direction on our thoughts related to our business idea hence we should prepare a financial model now we are seeing that if the business is very ordinary then we should just proceed ahead without making financial model so so in business model captures the eventualities in the entire life of the project and uh, the best thing about business model is that whatever you can foresee and you cannot put together you cannot analyze it in an integrated fashion this model that now let's come to the next section in which let's understand the how of this how do one how does one prepare financial model first of all please go to a person who understands how to make financial model or how excel works but you also don't forget to learn excel because it is always a good idea whether you are able to see the checks and balances the big companies might be deploying very complex software etc but we are not talking on that excel has no lacuny uh, in meeting all your requirements i mean uh, 
a business of the size of bill gates business can be written in today's excel version available so uh, if if your requirement is stone excel is a mountain so just you open excel and start using it its size precision and price etc everything is very reasonable and yes do not prepare financial model on paper and in scattered sheets you can do your own ins and outs in flows and outflows there but do not prepare prepare it on a rough sheet in the in this part of the uh, say, um, video i am going to tell you what are the types of financial models number financial models are classified based on for whom they are made one could be just a model made for yourself the other could be for the team of you promoters then for the equity finance equity investors or any such kind of investor then financer equity investor means who becomes a owner just like you and becomes one among your friend but he is a new friend and financer means bank they don't want to meddle into your management they are not interested in that they have a very simple understanding that against this security or against this understanding of cash flow of your business we are giving you this much money and please return us that money along with this much of interest those people are called financiers so the investing and financial financing are different aspects i will catch up with them in different videos there could be one more model that is for government you shouldn't share your financial model the promoter version will be always with you so you always refine your own version as per that the your own version the each promoter's version should be confidential from the version or the other because it reduces misunderstandings the financial model of a business should be necessarily confidential from the world uh, when you approach investors or financiers you please see that they are reasonable and professional people and they have systems and then you produce a non disclosure agreement or confidentiality agreement on a stamp paper of say rupees 100 or 200 and get it signed and then you reveal the business information to them even you may choose that certain very hard core technical operational market information will be passed on only only when the deal goes in the end stage so you can hold certain information and then you can frankly inform that that such version will be provided at this stage so uh, you you should keep the financial model confidential all the values when being shared with the external entities such as tax audit there should be pasted values there should be no links no formally then you should generally avoid the high tech part the core ip part etc and replace that with something called others totals it, it's not that you don't want to cheat the government or anything but the total number of people through which the documentation goes the agencies that 
the documentation see for them that information is just not required and you are providing the information they required in earnest and in completeness you are not hiding any information that is not required by them uh, that is you are not hiding any information that is must for them but you are hiding the secrets of your business which are irrelevant to them now then comes then let's come to the next section that is the difference between financial model and financial statements financial statements are like birthdays or uh, or uh, year of promotion i mean the full year of promotion of a person whereas financial modeling model is life of a person that that would be the analogy to capture the difference between them financial statements are for they are they are at least for just one second or even less than that and or say a one particular period of time say the balance sheet is for a flash of time the profit loss statement cash flow statements they are for periods like annual and uh, monthly quarterly etc so the financial statements that you see in the annual reports they are very accurate and they comply with the standards laid down by the industries the financial model that depicts the life of the project is uh, is not as accurate it is very appro- approximate and hence it can be done very fast also it is not uh, expected to be approximate and generally a person who prepares financial model is not supposed to be held accountable for what happens later because there are so many new decisions taken after the model is prepared that the relevance of financial model goes down down and down unless it is tuned to take into account what new things have gone into it so uh, uh, also one need not compare the financial model with budget because budgets are to see whether what we planned is happening in a particular period of time and uh and like that so it happens that one may prepare a very fantastic business financial model and may be that nothing turns out i mean a uh, uh, boy from uttar pradesh will go to mumbai with the high aspirations to become amitabh bachchan the legend of bollywood but uh, maybe he will settle for a role in a very small unknown tv serials assistants or something like that but i won't name one such any such one person yet. but your financial model right at the beginning might be uh, very bombastic and your work or lack of work on that may lead the business in a different aspect financial model will give you the clarity visibility as of that date as we move forward we are supposed to keep the original model and the revise revise the new one to see what is the visibility at that particular point of time as per the facts available then now i'll tell you in this section what is the use of financial model the most important use of financial model is 
the go no go decision you have assessed everything about the business and you plan to decide whether you should do this business or not so the financial model tells you this in unambiguous clear words yes or no and then why also and in in what circumstances this go no go decision can be revived all this is told by the financial model financial model gives you the idea of the very critical parameters of the business about which you should be very careful suppose uh, the in case of our retail financial services a certain revenue is dropping because of a certain parameter then we would certain suddenly able to come to know why it is happening what our profitability is highly dependent on a certain only top 5 10 parameters of the business and financial model very clearly identifies all of them it identifies the areas of optimization when you undertake operations you see the relative costs etc of the items and you know what are the market norms after certain times you know what kind of costs are there for these kind of things i mean you always must at the back of mind remember the difference of quality and then you can optimize those uh, resources then it helps you in identification of alliances and also the distribution of money between the alliances it gives you assistance in uh, making the decision on insourcing and outsourcing and whether the what things the firm itself should do what things the firm should get done from outside and avoid the labor it helps you in deciding pricing of your product it helps you in deciding scaling up or scaling down of the project it also tells you when to wind up the business it tells you what what things bring efficiencies to your business it tells you what everything about investment when you should go for investment etc uh it so it helps you in investment it helps you in financing it helps you in divestment of particular product or service if you have many it also gives you idea of how much of marketing you should do there are so many other uses of financial model now in this last section of this video uh let me remove a certain kind of disheartenment that you might have had after coming here that i you might have you might be thinking that i have read everything about financial model heard everything but there is nothing about that premium stuff uh, because the startup uh, lobby is very keen about the kind of premium that they would get on this when they start this venture the friends premium on investment is a very very small uh, part of business life it has huge number of aspects and yes excel your financial model directly calculates the premium that you are supposed to get from the investor and it also calculates all the flexibilities all the bargaining experimentation with respect to the investor uh, that you can do the premium word is a sub, is a small word i mean is a hidden word inside the word investment that i pronounced some time back it's just not premium friends 
it is about whole negotiation it's a protection of your interests uh, you, you would have a certain kind of interest in the firm you have a certain kind of special right in that organization and you, you might have to protect that then it, it, it could be about the dilution of your equity and the control over the company and even within the control what kind of control how much control of etc it is about the options of convergence and options of exit and entry those are also very very important you can incorporate all that through a financial model Again, I mean, when your startup is in humble state at the beginning, you should uh, just not rush for the investment. There should be a proper proportion between financing and investment, and you should decide what is the right proportion of them, etc. So. But this premium and negotiations with investment is not the topic here, and uh, that's why I am going to make a separate video on that. You can watch that later. I hope you liked this video, and I hope to know your feedback on this video. Thank you very much. Have a good day.